Hello everybody, Moonlit Mystique here. So, as I discussed in my update video, I'm going to be making a highlight reel for the episodes that had audio problems. <laughs> However, when I told you about that, I didn't actually look through all of the footage because I was just like, man, I've got three episodes from that recording session and I just thought, okay, well, I'm sure they're probably going to have mostly the same issues, so I'll just go through them and see if I can fix them, and then if not, I'll make a highlight reel, right? Okay, but look down here. That's labeled Might and Magic 7, Episode 6, 23 hours, 8 minutes and 10 seconds. And it is... 23 hours, 8 minutes, and 10 seconds of nothing. <laughs> I wish I was joking. This file is ridiculously large. Um, and it is just... It's, it's 23 hours of this. The entire time. It does not matter how... F it's just this. It's insane, and I, oh my god. I don't know how or why it happened, but I have nothing for episode six, apparently. Now, this might say episode six down here, but that's actually just these two put together in the timeline. So, yeah. Premiere couldn't even handle having this 23 hour clip in the timeline. It literally crashed. So, and that's before I was like, there's no way that this is 23 hours. There's gotta be, there's gotta be stuff in there. There's not. There's not. There is nothing. It is 23 hours, eight minutes and 10 seconds of nothing. So, that's where we're at today, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and make this highlight reel. Um, I, I hope this never happens again. <laughs> oh yeah, and one more thing before we go. So you remember how I told you that file was huge? It's 25.9 gigabytes huge of literally nothing. I just want to scream. Okay, so here we are. We are fighting some goblins. Everything seems to be going great. We're having a great time. I'm doing my typical thing, which means I go down and I fight for a minute. I lure some in. And then, you're gonna see me run back up that hill. And I'm gonna spam that button. Because that's how I do this area. Every time I play this game, this is how I do this area. And it is loud, and it is annoying, and I often end up setting the traps off on myself or accidentally running into sparks, which I almost just did. It's great! Now we're just going to clean up. We did manage to clear out that area completely, by the way. Yes, so now we get to say hello to our guard friend, whose comrade unfortunately fell to the might of the goblins. He, however, has survived, so it's all okay. And then we found our first obelisk, and I made great fun of the letters, because why not? And I failed to disarm a trap because that's how I do. That's how most of this video goes. Alexis still can't identify anything, so it, it's fine. We're pretty much at the same place we were last episode. 
More goblins, more goblins. The goblins never end in Harmondale. I do believe I recognize this building. It should be the building of the Arbiter. Yes, Judge Gray. How are you doing, my lords? I am Judge Gray. I have the unusual job of arbiting disputes between warring nations. The position has its rewards, but you'll never hear the people you're helping thank you. I always know I'm doing the right thing when both sides are angry with me at once. If there is one piece of advice I could give you, it would be to fix your castle. I don't know how you're going to find the gold and workers to do it, as only wealthy nobles and kings can afford such large-scale projects. I suppose it's the old chicken and egg question. You must appear noble to gain wealth and respect, but you must have wealth and respect in order to appear noble. In any event, if you expect to be Lords of Harmondale for more than a few months, you need to find a way to prove you're not just lucky peasants. You must prove that you're fit to rule. You never had it. Yes, quite an illuminating conversation, wouldn't you say? And would you look at that, more goblins. Would have never guessed it. I finally found myself on a bridge, and a goblin goes over, and there goes another. Down the cliffs they go, like the idiots they are. And we finally found the White Cliff Caves, which I have been walking around aimlessly trying to find. Turns out I was actually going the wrong direction the entire time. I eventually found it, but I went uh, very much the wrong way. And now we're gonna walk up to this fire pit and click it and light the signal fire and I'm going to freak out because I realize, oh gosh, that was a signal fire. And I thought it was actually gonna do something, but spoiler alert, it doesn't. Now we're gonna just travel through the night because that's what we do. But watch this, guys. Day. It is suddenly day. What happens to dawn? We don't know. And then I pray for seemingly no reason at all. To whom do I pray? I don't know. More crates. I'm, yep, gonna fail to disarm them and Alexis can't identify even a small shield. She is useless. Now we're just immediately going to the next one. Yep, told you. Now we're going to finally train, but we're not gonna train anybody to level six because Ethne fell a little behind. Probably because she was unconscious for a little while. Same problem, different day. Ah, now we're actually going to go into the White Cliff Caves. Exciting. Smart Me remembers Wizard Eye. And Torchlight! What an accomplishment. Ooh, and what is that? Those are troglodytes. Many troglodytes. Great fun troglodytes.
And what does one do when they get sick of fighting the troglodytes? We run away. Yes, this is true. And we heal a little. And then we take our alicorn wand of fireball and we annihilate all of them. This is laziness at its finest, people. Ah, and I discovered ore, something that I forgot even existed in this game. Ah, more troglodytes, and what is that there? An emerald ooze. And this is great fun to watch because the troglodytes will just continue to fight the ooze until they all die. Because... Oozes don't respond to physical attacks. You have to kill them with magic. Horribly inconvenient. You know what happens with chests and crates. I don't need to tell you. I'm gonna be smart, and I'm gonna heal a little, and then accidentally shoot a firebolt at the chest there. But I will heal. That's the important part. And we're gonna save. Ooh, nice. And we almost had a, a minor fainting issue, but we're okay. Of course, Alexis complains about everything. Money, money, money. Oh, yes. What brilliance is this? Where am I going? I don't even know. Oh, it's the guy and he's dead. How dreadful. But at least now we have an Archimage deck and there's a letter from the man. I wonder what it'll say. My studies in the game of Archimage have turned up the following observations. How you choose to win the game should be based on the victory conditions. If the towers start small, you stand a good chance of destroying your opponent's tower. If the towers or walls start large, you should concentrate on your own tower. If the towers or walls start large and you need a huge tower to win, a resource victory might be more easily attainable. Also note that the red cards tend to focus on your wall, blue cards focus on your tower, and green cards focus on your offense. Keep this in mind when choosing whether to emphasize quarries, magic, or zoos. I have noticed a prevailing trend in the thinking of most Archimage players that could provide an edge against them if they start to play blue cards. You can counter that with... So it basically just teaches you how to play Archimage. Huge pile of money there. Brilliant. And another chest, but I need some torchlight. Par for the course. Alexis wants to leave behind Leather Boots of Health. I say, nay nay, we ain't gonna do that. I found a secret door! Wonderful! Oh, there's so many chests! I wonder what's going to happen. I'm gonna accidentally click on two and knock two of my people unconscious, and the other two are barely holding on. Brilliant! So we're gonna load and try that again. Except we're gonna figure out my issue. I didn't assign skill points. So now I have, and now she can actually disarm these chests. Great, isn't it? And now we can go to this one. And then eventually we're gonna leave this cursed place. Good to see you again, my lords. Dead? Oh dear. 
These are certainly his cards, though. I, I don't want the cards. You can have them. That game has cost me enough now. Oh, poor Elrond. I have a little money you can keep for your help, and thank you for finding out what happened to Elrond. Now we're going to play Archimage. Exciting. All Archimage games here start with each player having a tower of 15, wall of 5. The object is to either get a tower of 30, one of the resources to 100, or to destroy your opponent's tower. Well, let's go ahead. Of course, I go for damage plus wall first. Makes sense. did use prism to get rid of power burn good thinking i power burn is one of those cards that i don't actually enjoy using it's a little self-destructive for my tastes <laughs> and look at here i could have chosen to goes with the plus five tower but Instead, I do something different and I strategize, and it wins me the game. Of course, that one was fairly easy. In other areas, it's not as easy, and it gets to be quite complex after a while. Now that we have won, we're gonna go to Arathia. We're getting the hell out of Harmondale, folks. Of course, we gotta get those horseshoes. Ah, yes, and now I figured out how to make weapons with that ore. Isn't it brilliant? Greetings, my name is Killian, and I can make weapons from ore. If you find ore, just bring me the chunk and I'll make a weapon of equivalent quality to the ore used. I will use the best ore first, and I take from only one person at a time. And for a second I considered maybe doing armor, but I've got plenty of good armor and this is gonna make really crappy weapons anyway. So here we are. Three crappy weapons. We're gonna play another game of Archimage, folks. This is also a brand new episode. All Archimage games here start with each player having a tower of 20 and a wall of 5. The object is either to get a tower of 50, one of the resources to 150, or destroy your opponent's tower. This one is going to be a little bit longer. And I take quite a lot of time to think, as you can see. I do believe my main goal was just keeping my tower a little bit taller than my opponent, while I slowly tried to figure out what I was doing with this one. Of course my wall kept getting destroyed, which was incredibly infuriating.
looks so pensive. And look at that, I lost. So let's try that again. I can't believe I almost actually played parody in that situation. I had to think about it. Glad I did. Oh, just play Elven Scout and get rid of parody. Why did I play it? I'm so confused. Why did I do that? I think I was getting a little frustrated at this point and just started doing things without thinking much. So slow and infuriating. I look so upset. So close, but yet so far. so upset. Fun! Over to the 
other side and cavalier. I'm not sure I care about your warnings, sir. I'm just gonna go anyway because I want to see what'll happen because that's just how I am. And am I gonna leave you all angry at me? Absolutely not. I'm not that stupid. So we're just gonna load. There we go. Now I'm gonna leave. Now I'm at Fort River Stride. Of course I'm smart. to do it eventually, but uh, the robbers and bandits seem like a much better option at this point. I need to get to them anyways, don't I? Retrieve a, a certain ring, was it? So, Royal Griffins, there are many down there that are hostile. This was also great fun. Almost as fun as trying to kill those Royal Griffins I was talking about. I sneezed everywhere. And, and, I killed Alexis! <laughs> so I'm gonna load because I'm dumb and I didn't heal anybody and that's really stupid of me. died, but she didn't, and we got the ring. That's what matters. And this is right around where we're going to end off for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a little bit different from usual, but considering the uh, problems that I had, I think this was the best solution. As I mentioned earlier, I do not have footage from episode 6, so I will have to go through and just kind of catch you guys up before the next episode if need be. I think a lot of it was just more fighting. So again, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you have a great day. Bye!